Welcome back. In this video of our data science project, we'll create an interactive web application with Dash using the API backed by our model. This web app could be the simple final product of our project. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Just Into Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. So in the previous video, we set up and ran an API endpoint with Fast API. It takes in the home and the way team's name and returns the game prediction results. How can we use this API? As an example, we'll build a user-friendly web application querying it. To build the web app, we'll use Plotly Dash. It's a free Python library that allows us to develop web-based, customizable, interactive dashboards in Python without writing HTML or JavaScript. This is a dashboard that you'll be able to build at the end of the video. We have a title to welcome our users. Then there's a drop-down menu to select the home team and a drop-down to select the away team. After the user selects both teams, the app will automatically print out below the model prediction result. A little introduction before we move into coding. Each Dash app has two main parts, the layout and the callback function. The layout determines the visual components displayed on the Dash app. For example, this heading and these dropdowns. While the callback function is a function that connects these Dash components and defines their interactive features. Now let's go to PyCharm to implement this. Again, if you don't have your preferred Python editor, you can download PyCharm for free. It's also necessary to install Dash before using it. I'm not going to show it, but you can use the pip install dash command to do it. Let's set up a new Python file and call it NBA Games Dashboard. To save us time from typing, I'm going to paste all the code to build the Dash app here. Let's go through it line by line. First, we need to import the libraries. The necessary one for a dashboard are Dash, the main Dash library. Also, importing input and output from Dash dependencies so that we can use them without referring to Dash.dependencies. Dash HTML components for building the layout which contains components for every HTML tag, such as the H1 heading. Dash core components for building the layout, which contains different higher level components, such as dropdown. Then the NBA League Game Finder, since we'll be loading some data from it. And also the requests package, since we'll be sending requests to the API we built in the previous video. Next, we are loading the recent NBA games data as games. This is needed since we want to display the team names in our dropdowns. So next, we are grabbing the unique team names and sort it in alphabetical order so that it's easier to find the team. Then this is to create a list of dictionaries for the dropdown options based on the unique team names. As you might recall, our dropdowns will have options for users to select unique NBA games teams. That's why we're setting these up. Next, we are creating a Dash app called App. The app building process starts from the layout. We need to design the look of the dashboard first. The layout has a structure of a tree of components. We use the keyword layout of the app to specify its layout. Then, using the two libraries, Dash HTML components, HTML, and Dash core components, DCC, we can display multiple components on our dashboard. So we have an H1 heading as a title of the dashboard. We specify its children property to be the text, welcome to the NBA games winner prediction. An H2 heading with the text home team, below which is a dropdown with an ID of home team. The options property specifies the options of unique team names the dropdown has. 
This is a variable we've set up earlier here. The value property is a selected team name when we first launched the app. We made it as a first item in the team name object. You can make it another team as you like. Similarly, there's also an H2 heading for the away team, followed by a dropdown with ID away team and the same team options. Since the user should be able to pick among the same list of unique teams as either the home team or the away team. Then the currently selected value, we made it as a second item on the list. And again, you can make it whatever you want. At the end is an H3 heading printing some text with ID output text. This component will display the game results. As you might have noticed, we are using an HTML.div component to hold all of these dash components. The HTML div is a container component which is always used when we have multiple dash components in the layout. We put the other dash components as a list inside its children property. After setting up the dashboard's look, it's time to look at the callback function that makes it interactive. The callback functions are Python functions, but they get automatically called by dash whenever its input changes, so that as a result, the function runs and updates its output. The two main sections of the callback function are the decorator, which starts with at app.callback, and the function itself, which starts with def. This callback function returns the prediction result based on the selection of dropdowns. Within the decorator at app.callback, we specify one output and two input objects of the callback function. They are all properties of dash components. In our example, the output is a children property of the dash component with ID output text, which is the H3 component at the end of the layout. While one input is a value property of the dash component with ID home team, the other input is a value property of the dash component with ID away team, which are the two DCC dropdown components set in the layout. After specifying these inputs and output, we use them within the function below. After the def update output div, within the parentheses, we name the inputs as home team, away team, and these corresponds to the two inputs up here. Then within the body of the function, we ask the function to send a get request to this address which is the API we've set up and run. This request has parameters as a dictionary here. The keys are the inputs of the APIs. So team home will take the value of the input home team and team away will take the value of the input away team. So when the user selects a team in the dropdowns, these data gets passed to the API and the API processes it and returns a prediction result as a response object here we can get the information we need from this object. To grab its content, we can use a JSON decoder and call the result JSON response. Lastly, we set up two variables to format the result indicator and the probability. We set this winning team variable as home team if the JSON response result is one, else away team. Recall that we are predicting whether the home team wins or not. So when the result is one, it's home team as a winning team. Otherwise, the away team is a winning team. Well, the probability of winning is based on this winning team result. So it equals the win probability if the winning team is home team, since we set up the probability to be the probability of a home team win. Otherwise, if the winning team is a away team, the probability of winning will be one minus the win probability. At the end of the function, it returns an F string printing winning team will win with a probability, probability of winning, which is the output here. For example, if the user selects Toronto Raptors in the home team dropdown component, its value property will be Toronto Raptors, which means the input of the function home team equals Toronto Raptors. Similarly, 
when the user selects a team in the away team, it will change the input away team as well. These changes will trigger the callback function to send the request to the API, process the response, and update the output as this F string with the prediction result, which is returned as the output corresponding to this here. That's all the work needed for the callback function. To complete the script, we have this code to run the server. By default, the Dash app runs on our local computer. Now let's run this code. We can go to the terminal, click here to add a new session, since there's already one running the API. Please make sure you still have the API running from the previous video, since we're sending requests to it in the current script. Then we can type here command python nba games dashboard.py. After running successfully, you should see the below messages in the terminal window. Remember that Dash creates web applications. So this URL here is a default address to access the app. You can click on this link to see your NBA prediction Python interactive dashboard in the browser. Here you go. We can select different teams within the dropdown to see the updated result. For example, let's set Los Angeles Lakers as a home team and Boston Celtics as a away team. And our model predicted that Boston Celtics will win this game with a probability of 50.04. It seems like a close match. This is great. Again, don't forget you've come a long way to create this app. From collecting data, cleaning, exploring, modeling, deploying to API, until here. If you want to make this app public to share with others, you can deploy this on a platform like Heroku for free, which we might show in a separate video. Or you can search for Heroku Dash for the instructions. If you're interested in learning more about Dash, check out our course Python Interactive Dashboards with Plotly Dash. I'll put a link in the description below. So hopefully you've got the idea of how a complete data science project works from end to end. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.